The Hawaii Super Ferry, now under construction, is becoming a hotly contested issue. The informal video you are about to see has been produced to shed light on this very controversial topic. This is a picture of the Hawaii Super Ferry. The first ferry is scheduled to go into operation in July of 2007. Construction will start on the second ferry soon. It's a nice looking boat. It can do up to 37 knots, the equivalent of 42 miles per hour in open water. This is an extremely fast boat and it will carry 866 passengers and 283 cars. There are some people, including all those involved in the making of this video, who think the Hawaii Super Ferry will pose a serious threat to humpback whales, and especially to mothers and babies like these swimming just below the surface. Let's look at some of the precautions the Super Ferry promoters stated would protect whales and other marine life. It was originally planned to use sonar on the Super Ferry, but it turned out there was a problem that could not be overcome. In order to transmit far enough so the Super Ferry would detect whales in time to slow down or change direction, the sonar intensity would have to be so high that it might injure the whales long before the Super Ferry reached them. Also, the required high sonar intensity would exceed legally permitted harassment levels. So what decision was made? Simply, sonar is not being included in the Super Ferry now under construction. Still, the Super Ferry promoters apparently made a great impression on the government officials who gave the Hawaii Super Ferry their enthusiastic approval. Even an environmental impact statement was deemed unnecessary. Perhaps that was because local officials thought the Super Ferry would use sonar to detect whales. There might have been another reason for not requiring an environmental impact statement. One of the primary agencies involved is the Hawaiian Islands Humpback Whale National Marine Sanctuary. This agency was established by Congress for the primary purpose of protecting whales in their calving grounds, not to protect commercial interests. But several years ago, the members of the Sanctuary Advisory Committee, often called SAC, voted not to take a position on the Hawaii Super Ferry. Then, more recently, they turned around and unanimously voted to approve the Super Ferry Company's whale avoidance policy. Could this change of position have been influenced by the fact, as shown in this diagram, there are two people, Terry White and Terry O'Halloran, who have very important positions in both the Super Ferry Company and the Sanctuary Advisory Committee? With this close cooperation between the government and private industry, who is left to protect the whales? Let's take a closer look at some of the other precautions the Super Ferry promoters have suggested would avoid harming whales. Radar is recommended in the whale avoidance policy, but radar doesn't work underwater. In heavy seas, radar will not reliably detect whales on the surface. Visual observation has also been recommended, but who is capable of staring out straight ahead for hours at a time, looking at nothing but waves, even through optically stabilized binoculars? If after a few hours, or maybe even a few minutes, the observers might look away, get into a conversation, or simply take a coffee break, a whale could break the surface when no one is looking, and catastrophe. A large part of the overall problem is that the Super Ferry will be fast, really fast. At its maximum speed of 42 miles per hour, it will cover a distance of two football fields in less than 10 seconds. In the whale avoidance policy, the Super Ferry promoters have promised to slow down to 25 knots, or 28 miles per hour in areas where whales are expected. But at this reduced speed, the Super Ferry will still cover the distance of two football fields in less than 15 seconds. And whales can break the surface anywhere and at any time. If the ferry slowed down for long periods of time, the inter-island trip would take a lot longer and customers could become disgruntled. Also, since the Super Ferry weighs considerably more than any marine mammal, if it should hit a whale, the passengers on the ferry might not even feel the collision. Dead or injured whales could drift off behind the Hawaii Super Ferry and no one will ever know what happened. 
Many collisions have been recorded between large ships and whales. Ship strikes are considered to be an important cause of known whale deaths. But most ship strikes are probably not detected because the dead whales drift off behind the ship, leaving the carcasses to sink or to be eaten by sharks. This catamaran is slightly smaller and a little faster than the coming Hawaii Super Ferry. Until recently, catamarans like this handled most of the traffic between the different Canary Islands. This sperm whale was probably hit by one of these fast ferries in an area near the Canary Islands where there are lots of sperm whales, so collisions are frequent. The large cut was made by one of the sharp bows. Many dead sperm whales strand because of the short distances between islands, but many other dead whales might sink or they may be carried away by currents. So the overall effect of collisions by fast ferries on the sperm whale population is unknown. Here, scientists observe a dead sperm whale that was probably hit by a fast ferry. Three recent scientific papers agree that since 1999, when fast ferries started to operate in the Canary Islands, the stranding rate of cetaceans went up by about 1,200 percent from earlier years. This is an incredible increase and suggests a future high humpback kill rate by the Hawaii Super Ferry. Here are two sperm whales resting at the surface, probably after a deep dive. With these heavy blows, they should be easy to see by an approaching ferry. So why are collisions so frequent near the Canary Islands? It must be because the ferries move at a speed of about 38 knots or 44 miles an hour. That's a distance of two football fields in about nine seconds. At that speed, an observer with binoculars could hardly ever look away. That is, if there were such an observer, and the pilot would hardly have time to take action even if he saw a whale far in front of the boat. The Hawaii Super Ferry will move almost as fast as this ferry. And without sonar, it will no more be able to avoid hitting humpbacks than the fast ferries near the Canary Islands have been able to avoid hitting sperm whales. In Hawaii, sperm whales are usually found in deep offshore waters. This is where the super ferry will move at high speed. And like sperm whales near the Canary Islands, mother and baby humpbacks spend a lot of time near the surface, making them especially vulnerable to being hit by the Hawaii super ferry. Mother humpback whales are very maternal and almost always swim very close to their babies and very often swim almost directly beneath them. The babies have to breathe often and therefore tend to swim quite close to the surface, with the mothers often only a little further down. If a super ferry were to approach this mother and baby whale, it would not be likely to see them unless the sea was very calm, and it could easily hit these whales because its pontoons are likely to extend down at least 14 feet below the surface. We've shown a number of examples of the common mother-baby near-surface behavior that will make them vulnerable to being struck by the Hawaii Super Ferry. Is there a solution? We believe that the Hawaii Super Ferry should be permitted to operate in Hawaiian waters only if it can truly be demonstrated that it is not a serious threat to humpback whales and other marine mammals. But in the absence of high-intensity sonar, the precautions discussed in the whale avoidance policy seem almost meaningless. And without sonar, the super ferry will no more be able to avoid hitting humpbacks in Hawaiian waters than are the fast ferries able to avoid hitting sperm whales in the waters of the Canary Islands, because both mother and baby humpbacks and sperm whales spend a lot of time near or at the surface. And although humpbacks in Hawaiian waters that will be killed by the super ferry may not often drift ashore. They will be just as dead as these sperm whales killed by similar fast ferries in the waters of the Canary Islands.